Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. We are here with another video on the topic trees and it is a very famous interview question, invert binary tree. So we are given a tree and we have to return the inverted binary tree. Let us see what is an inversion with the help of an example. So suppose we have a tree, 1, 2 and 3. If you want to find the inversion of this, it will look something like this 1, 3, and 2. So, this is the inverted tree of the given tree. Now, let us see some bigger example. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so this is the tree that we have. And we want to find the inversion of this tree. So it is going to look something like this, 1 is the root, then 3 is going to come here, this entire subtree is going to come here, then 7 and 6, and on the left side 2 with 5 and 4 here. So this will be the final inverted tree of the given tree. Now we can observe that the left subtree is going to come to the right side and the right subtree is going to come to the left side and the next thing that we can observe is the left subtree which is 2, 4 and 5 is inverted itself so we can see this example this is the inversion similarly this tree is inverted and the right subtree it is also inverted so this problem is very recursive in nature for those who are not comfortable with the topic recursion, they can go to the description. They will find a compact video based on the topic which covers up the theory as well as few standard problems on recursion. Once you watch that video and you are comfortable with recursion, you can solve almost all the problems based on the topic trees and binary trees. Because most of them are very recursive in nature. Now we can see the code of the same. So when I'm coding a recursive solution, I always prefer making a helper function. This time we are making a void helper function. We will pass the tree node to this function. And if the root is equal to null, that means the tree is null and we are going to return from here. Otherwise, as we saw, we are going to call the same function on the left hand side. So roots left. We want to invert the left subtree and we want to invert the right subtree. And after that, we want to swap the left subtree with the right subtree. So, in order to swap, we need another temporary variable temp, which is equal to roots left. And then roots left is going to become roots right, and roots right is equal to temp. Now we can call this help function from the main invert tree function by passing the root value and we can return the root value from this function. Let us try to submit this and it got accepted. So now we can see how this function is working recursively. So we are taking the same example. Alright, so this is the tree that we have. Now we are here at the root and we are calling the function on the left subtree and on the right subtree. So to the recursion, this tree is going to come 2, 4 and 5, 2, 4 and 5. Now the same function will be called recursively on 4 and recursively on 5. So to the next recursive call, 4 is going to come. Now 4 is going to call recursively on the left side and the right side and both of them are null. So nothing is going to happen and 4 will be returned as it is to 2. So 4 will come back from here, 5 is going to come back from here and now these two nodes will be swept. So the final configuration of the tree will become 2, 5 and 4. Now this is going to be returned to 1. So now 5 is here, 4 is here. Similarly, 3 is going to return, 6 here and 7 here. Now 1 is going to swap these two nodes. So after the swap, the tree will look like this and 1 is going to return this to the main invert tree function. 
So this is how the recursive calls are working. Now talking about the time complexity, as we are visiting each of the node of the tree, the time complexity is big O of n, where n is the number of nodes. And about the space complexity, we can see we are not creating any auxiliary space, but there is an implicit space that is being used here, and it is because of the helper function. So this space in the stack is used when the help function is called recursively and it depends on the height of the tree. If the tree is skewed, so the height of the tree becomes big O of n and hence the space complexity will become big O of n and when the tree is balanced, the height of the tree is log n with the base 2 and so is the space complexity. So this is it for the video. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Please press the bell icon so that you can get the notification for the latest videos. And in order to suggest content for my future videos, you can join our telegram group as well. Thank you.